Hello everyone, welcome back, you're in Medbay. So welcome to our next video in the preclinical series and today we're going to be talking about how to survive first year at Cardiff University School of Medicine. First of all, I just want to say a huge congratulations to everybody who got in this year. Like it really wasn't an easy task, especially with COVID making things much more difficult. So well done to you all. So the aims of this video is to just to get a better understanding of what the course structure is like and we'll also include some good tips and tricks to help you survive this year as best as you can. So what is the course structure actually like at Cardiff University? Our first term, so from September to December, is something known as Platform for Clinical Sciences, so otherwise known as PCS. PCS is actually split up into three different units that happen across uh, from September to December. So the first unit is like on the building blocks of life, second one on like distribution, defense and repair, and third one being communication and control. All the key anatomy and physiology is split up into these three different blocks. So one thing I have to say about PCS is that it's very different to what you've been doing during GCSEs and A-levels. It is a whole lot more intense with a very busy schedule. You usually have nine to five days with lectures, practicals, anatomy sessions. So it can be very kind of overwhelming at the start, but it does get easier as you go along. And don't worry if you don't understand all of the content that you're covering in that first term, because you do uh, inevitably come across it again during cases and things later on during the year and um, as you progress through medical school as well. Do try and understand the basics when you're starting out. Use textbooks, use YouTube videos, use whatever material you can get your hands on to understand the basics first well and then you'll be able to apply that when it comes to your clinical years later on and there's loads of different resources that you can use out there you can go to libraries borrow textbooks you can use something called clinical key student uh, and that's an online platform that your university lets you have access to um, and you can access so many different textbooks on there and there are loads of amazing youtube channels out there like ninja nerd tacky tutorials most of these youtube channels have really good concise videos to help you understand preclinical content well so do check them out when you have time as well then after christmas is when you start your case-based learning within the two weeks you get related lectures anatomy sessions practicals and all of these help you understand that particular case better and you also along with that get case sessions as well so you roughly get around three case sessions per case during your first case session you usually meet in around groups of 10 students in your year and you'll read the patient scenario um, of that particular case and come up with learning outcomes as a group together that explore the different social, psychological and biological factors of that particular case. So I'll give you a little example. So say if you have um, a patient coming in with knee pain and in the biological side would explore like the anatomy of the knee and what can go wrong with the knee. And the psychological side would be like the impact of the pain on the patient's mood and their um, their surroundings and social factors as well like how it's impacted on their work so you'll be able to get a very holistic view of a particular case and from this initial case scenario that you get given you go off you after creating learning outcomes and then come back in further two further case sessions to discuss what you've learned and you can teach each other learn from each other ask questions, be curious. In this environment, you learn by asking questions, you learn by teaching each other what you've learned because somebody else might have understood something better than you have. And for them to be able to explain it to you, you're helping them consolidate it as well. And there are gonna be other resources around the room like a projector, whiteboard, so use these to help each other learn better. There will also be a case facilitator present within the room 
but they are given guidance not to get too involved in the case discussions because it's all about the group working together and coming up with learning outcomes and helping each other learn. But they might be more involved during the start when you're still getting used to things, but they will um, gradually get less and less involved as the year progresses. And within the two weeks of case, um, you will have related, like I said, anatomy sessions and practicals, and you'll also get placement as well. You may be placed uh, anywhere within the five different hubs. So you might be placed in Cardiff, Bridgend, Merthyr, Newport or Abergavenny. And this is a very good thing because you'll get to see patients from all kinds of different demographics based on where you're placed at. During your placement sessions, you'll learn everything from the basics of history taking to performing different examinations based on whichever case you're doing. So if you're doing a heart case, you learn how to do the cardiovascular exam. And preparation will help. So looking at, say, geeky medics before you go on placement, just to know all the basics of that particular examination you'll be doing will inevitably help. So now I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about the different assessments and examinations throughout the year. So in PCS, you get three quizzes that you have to do at the end of each unit. And they are formative assessments, so they don't count towards your end of year score, but they do help you in consolidating all the content you've covered in that particular unit. Then after Christmas, you'll get two further formative assessments just to quiz you on all your PCS knowledge. Again, they don't count towards your end of year mark. And finally, you have one summative exam at the end of the year to test you on all the knowledge from PCS and CASE together. And this is quite a long exam, but it does help you consolidate everything that you've learned throughout the year. And if you do well, you may even get an award as well. So that's just one motivation to do well. And there are other assessments throughout the year as well, like reflective writing pieces and social sciences essay and something called student selected components or SSCs. And these you choose which projects you want to do, but they can uh, involve things like presenting as a team. Uh, and conducting a literature review. So they help you build other skills alongside your medical school learning. And finally, just a little bit about extracurricular activities you can get involved in. So Cardiff University, we're very lucky to have a huge range of different activities like sports and societies and volunteering that you can get stuck in from first year. Go to the Freshers' Fair, even if it's online. Find out which societies and volunteering activities that you would like to be a part of because I'm sure there's something for everyone's like niche interest. Even though the PCS timetable was really, really packed, I still wanted to be able to do other things outside as well. So I went to the Freshers' Fair, found out which um, societies I could join and I eventually ended up joining uh, a few like Bollywood Dance Society and Asian Society and I'm really glad I did and I, going back I don't think I'd change a thing because I was able to make so many different memories and so many new friends through doing these activities. I think it can get really intense if medicine is the only thing that you do because you need something to actually be able to relax a bit and enjoy your actual university life properly as well. Just have a laugh with friends and just relax um, because your medical school time too will actually be quite packed. And maybe I should have focused a little bit more on my studies in first year, but going back, I don't think I'd change a thing. And I still managed to do all right. So, you know, that's good motivation for you, I hope. But I just want to end this video by congratulating you for getting into medicine. Uh, it's not an easy task and you've done it, so well done. And good luck for stepping into this new stage in your lives. And I hope you get a, an amazing university experience uh, at medical school. Thank you for listening and make sure you do check out future lifestyle and medicine content on this channel. So thanks everyone, take care.